Hey guys, and welcome back to Genshin Interact. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the second half of the 2.2 Star Rail banners today. The first character we'll be taking a look at is Boot Hill, and the second character we're going to be looking at on the other side of the banner is Fu Zhuan. Let's go through both of these banners and see whether or not these characters are a good pulling option for you. Also, if you do enjoy the video, go ahead and like and subscribe and check out the rest of the channel for other videos you may be interested in. We do also have a Discord you can join where our members can talk with each other and even talk with us. Now, on to the video. The first character we're going to want to talk about is Boot Hill. Now, this is going to be his first banner coming in. And first and foremost, we want to kind of talk about what his team function is, much like we do with our other Topo and Octopo videos. Now, in general, when looking at Boot Hill, his team function, where he kind of fits in a team, is going to be your main DPS, basically. You're going to use a lot of harming units to buff him, especially because of weakness break with his specific hunt kit. Now, normally, he kind of goes off the rails a little bit differently um, compared to other hunt characters. And you'll kind of see why when we go into his kit. And so going into his kit, his basic attack is something that you're going to want to level into because he's going to be getting an enhanced base attack through his skill. His skill forces Boot Hill and a single target enemy into the standoff state. You'll basically see like almost like a western standoff to go against this other enemy. Boot Hill's basic attack at this point gets enhanced and he cannot use his skill and that skill will last for two turns. This duration reduces by 1 at the start of Boot Hill's every turn, and the enemy target in the standoff becomes taunted to Boot Hill. When this enemy target or Boot Hill gets attacked by the other party members in the standoff, the damage they receive increases by 30% for the enemy target and 15% for Boot Hill. After this target is defeated or becomes weakness broken, Boot Hill gains 1 stack of pocket trick shot and then dispels the standoff state. This skill cannot regenerate energy, and after using the skill, the current turn does not end, so he can do another attack during this point in time. You can either do one of your enhanced normal attacks or basic attacks, or you can use your burst. When you're obviously using the skill, you're going to be getting those enhanced basic attacks, and you're going to be doing over double the amount of damage that you would normally do with a normal attack or your basic attack, and the enhanced basic attack cannot recover skill points like they normally can whenever it's a normal basic attack, and can only target the enemy that is in the standoff state and nobody else. Now going on to his ultimate, it applies physical weakness to a single target enemy, which lasts for two turns as well, dealing physical damage equal to 400% of Boot Hill's attack to the target that it hits, and it will also delay the action of the enemy hit by 40%. He also has a special talent that each stack of the pocket trick shot increases the enhanced basic attacks toughness reduction by 50% and can stack up to 3 times. If the target is weakness broken while the enhanced basic attack is already being used, based on the number of pocket trick shot stacks that Boot Hill has, he'll deal break damage to this target equal to 70%, 120%, and 170% of Boot Hill's physical break damage. The max toughness taken into account for this damage cannot exceed 16 times the base toughness reduction of the basic attack that he has. After winning the battle, Boot Hill can retain all pocket trick shot for the next battle that he has, so it's kind of a little bit different than Acheron, who after she ends a battle, she can't keep all of her stacks for her ultimate. Alright, so the next character we're taking a look at on this banner is Fu Zhuan. This is going to be her rerun, and she is a great character. Looking right at her team function and how she kind of works, she is a preservation quantum unit, and so she's going to be heavily sustaining your team, and she does a very good job at it. Jumping right into her kit, her basic attack isn't anything special. Um, you, you're, you don't even have to really level it. It's just a touch of quantum damage. It's really not really useful at all. Um, it will be good for getting skill points back though, so that is something you can do, but really it's kind of useless. So looking right at the skill, this is a big, big part of her kit, probably the biggest part of her kit. When you use Fujuan's skill, it activates what's called a Matrix of Prescience, through which other team members will distribute 65% of the damage they receive to Fujuan for three turns. And before this damage is mitigated by any shields too. So if you have other shields on other characters, before it damages the shield on the said character, it will mitigate the damage first. While affected by Matrix of Prescience, all team members gain the Knowledge Effect, which increases their respective max HP by 6% of Fujuan's max HP and increases crit rate by 12%. Now I am assuming that this skill is level 10. When Fujuan is knocked down, the Matrix of Prescience will be dispelled. Looking right at Fujuan's ultimate, this will be an AoE massive hit, will hit every opponent on the field, and it deals quantum damage equal to 100% of Fujuan's max HP, which is kind of nice. I mean, she does scale on HP, so the hit is like okay but that's not the main focus of her ultimate the main focus of her ultimate is the fact that once you do it you will obtain one trigger count for her hp restore effect granted by fujuan's talent which is what we'll jump right into next 
So this talent is called Bleak Breeds Bliss. And while Fujuan is still active in battle, Misfortune Avoidance is applied to the entire team. With Misfortune Avoidance, allies take 18% less damage. When Fujuan's current HP falls to 50% of her max HP or less, HP Restore, which I just talked about in the ultimate, how that trigger count will go up when you use it, this HP Restore will be triggered for Fujuan, restoring her HP by 90% of the amount of HP she is currently missing. In other words, when Fujuan does take damage to right at her 50% health mark or lower, it'll trigger her passive, her talent right here, and she'll heal herself, which is very good because she's already mitigating all the damage she receives for the team and, and reducing the damage that the team takes and kind of putting it on her. And then she also heals herself. So very, very great sustain. This effect cannot be triggered if she receives a killing blow, which I'll be honest with you, a fully built Fujuan taking a killing blow is very rare to happen. Uh, I can really only see this happening at the very, very far end game points. And even then, you'd have to be doing something wrong. This effect has one trigger count by default and can hold up to a maximum of two trigger counts. And you can see that through the end game, you can see that right under her character model. That is your trigger count for this talent being able to take effect. And once again, by using the ultimate, you get one more of that trigger count. That's how you get them back. Now jumping over into the weapon banner, quickly just looking at both of the light cones to really see which one, you know, when you're looking at these weapons, are they going to be good for boot hill and you know how well is you going to be really needing them compared to some other characters as well looking at boot hill's light cone it states that it increases the wearer's break effect by 60 percent and the break damage dealt by the wearer ignores 20 percent of the target's defense when the wearer's break effect in battle is 150 percent or higher it increases their speed by 12 percent now the reason that this is so good is because of some of the things that kind of i didn't really touch on in general when looking at this character kit when looking at this light cone, this is really going to point back actually to the bonus abilities that you're going to get off of Boot Hill. Now, not only does he do extremely well off of weakness break and having a lot of break effect, obviously in general in his kit, and that's why a lot of the harmony characters are going to be good for him. But if you look at his third bonus ability, it states that it increases this character's crit rate and crit damage by an amount equal to 10% to 50% of break effect up to a maximum of 30% and 150%. Basically here what you're getting is a 10% crit rate increase of how much break effect you have over the 150 amount. So if you have let's say 300% which is the maximum amount of break effect, 10% of 300% of your break effect is 30% which is the maximum amount of crit rate you can get. Now if you have 300% break effect as well, then you're going to be getting 50% of that 300% as crit damage, which in turn turns to 150% crit damage. In general, you're going to want to try to get as close to the 300% break effect as possible, especially when you have this light cone, just because of getting that increasing amount of 60% of break effect helps you to really not have to worry too, too much about other things in his kit, like, like looking at a lot of other crit stats, like when you look at some other characters that are in the hunt path, characters like Sila or Topaz that are heavily focusing on getting a lot of crit and attack stats. Those are going to be nice for him, but having a, an extremely high amount of break effect is already going to give him a bunch of crit rate and crit damage as well. Now, when we look at basically in general here, it's a little bit different than what we kind of do with Genshin. With these light cones, we're kind of looking at, at what other characters, if any, could they really be good at. And in general, when we look at some other characters that are going to be good, we're obviously only going to be able to look at the characters that can use the weapon, which are on the hunt path. Characters like Dr. Ratio, Yan Ching, Topaz and Numbi, Sila, and Don Hung are all going to be focused way too much on crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, and are not really going to be very viable to use this weapon. The only character that you could try to force this, you know, five-star weapon on if you somehow, somehow, in the weirdest way possible, accidentally get this light cone, is to put it on Sushang if, you know, you really want to, because she has some physical or some, like, weakness broken things in her kit, but even still, most of the time with these weapons or these light cones, you're only going to be getting the 5-star weapon or light cone for the actual character that it's going for. Now taking a look at the other weapon on the banner for this phase, Fujuan's weapon. This is called She Already Shut Her Eyes. And it's obviously going to be very great for Fujuan as a preservation unit. The ability on this states that increases the wearer's max HP by 24% and energy regeneration rate by 12%. When the wearer's HP is reduced, all allies' damage dealt increases by 9%, lasting for two turns. At the start of every wave, restore HP to all allies by an amount equal to 80% of their respective lost HP. 
this weapon is very very good uh if you do have fujuan um if you are going to pull fujuan highly would personally recommend uh to pull it i i'm going to be pulling it myself because i did have fujuan for from her original run but something about this and and vixen already stated it pretty well with boot hill's weapon is the thing in star rail is you can't lose to weapons like it's they're not merged like they are in genshin now you could still lose the 75 25 and get one of the standard weapons or the standard light cones right but typically you're not wishing for fujuan's weapon unless you know you're pulling fujuan um you could pull weapons for other characters like especially the four stars if you want to have them on five star light cones that's that's an option uh, in a lot of areas of the game but here what's interesting is all the preservation units in the game, except Fujuan, they all scale on defense. Some of them have attack percent in there, like the Trailblazer, March 7th. So the point here is Fujuan is the only preservation unit in the game right now, at least, that scales on her max HP. So there's no reason to be pulling this five-star light cone for any other preservation unit because... Well, I mean, look at the passive again, increasing the wearer's max HP by 24%. That's not really helping out those other preservation units. Now, the energy regeneration rate is nice, but it's just not worth it. There's going to be a lot of four star options that I think are just going to be better and also just save your stellar jade on as well. Also, when the wearer's HP is reduced, all allies damage increases by 9%. This is this works great for Fujuan because she's not shielding units, she's just mitigating damage. So she, her HP actually does go down when receiving damage from opponents. Whereas most every other preservation unit, well, all of the other preservation units are granting shields, which means if your shield is tanky enough, you're not your HP is not reducing, Where which means if you have this, let's say you just throw this on event terrain for some reason, you're not getting that 9% damage increase to your other allies, unless you're taking a hit hard enough that actually breaks the entire shield and starts dipping into the HP. So I say all that to say, this weapon, this light cone, is only good for Fujuan, at least right now. Maybe if we get preservation units in the future that scale on their HP, that could change. Like normal, after we talk about weapons or light cones, we jump right over into a summary kind of area where we're looking at a bunch of questions, as well as looking at, you know, E0 versus, you know, different Eidolons for the characters. But first, jumping into the first question we have, the first question we have is, do you need either character on your account? Really looking at how valuable the characters are. Now, when we kind of talk about Boot Hill, we're talking about kind of a new meta shift on how we're looking way more into break effect and characters that are kind of forcing that uh, mindset. If you already have the Harmony Trailblazer, you have Ruan May or something like that, if you pulled Robin even, our mindset is kind of switching a little bit over to that weakness break or that just break efficiency kind of heavy thing and that's going to really help a lot of characters like for instance boot hill who is going to be focusing heavily on break effect he's really a part of the quote-unquote new meta now not only that he's an extremely cool looking character and extremely fun i think he has extremely high value that you could use in general with most things as well as just focusing on you know we already get the harmony trailblazer if you've gotten through enough of the story so i think in general getting him is not not too far from maybe a, a bad idea. He's a very good idea to actually pull for a character and pretty valuable at that. Looking at Fujuan, in general, preservation is way more valuable than what you would maybe look like at abundance. And the, big and the biggest reason I really say that is because in general, if maybe you're about to get one tapped by something, you have, let's say, 5,000 HP. And if even if you have a five-star healer like Hua Hua, you're really like, the healer can't heal you when you take a hit. If you're, if you're you know, DPS has 3,000, you know, HP and you take a hit for 3,001 damage, your healer can't do anything to revive you unless it's Bailu. And even at that point, if they hit you again, you don't have that revive. And so the biggest problem here is that, you know, abundance is kind of lacking in that sense. Whereas preservation characters like Japard or Fujuan here and Aventurine, and Fujuan and Aventurine are really the top preservation characters to really go for, are going to be able to tank heavier hits for you and do a lot better. Aventurine's shield is extremely strong and is very difficult to break through if you're constantly keeping it up. And he's very, very good at not really bleeding through your skill points whereas some other characters might and Fujuan is the same way once you get that damage mitigation up she's not only deleting a lot of the damage coming to characters but she's also she's taking some of that damage and she's getting rid of most of the damage anyways about 65% of it at the most so she's getting rid of 65% of the damage and then 35% is getting split between the different characters so in general Fujuan has a very high value in terms of pulling options as well 
Looking at our next question, we ask what elements or paths or just roles and stuff like that do you need on your account? Like what are you missing and or maybe who else fills that role? And I think with Star Rail, this can get a lot deeper than maybe something like Genshin. Genshin, it's just kind of like elements, right? Whereas here you have elements and that, that can be important because if you don't have certain elements, you know, you're, you're kind of stuck with not being able to break a certain, you know, shield maybe on a boss. But then you have to think about the paths that the different characters follow that can have, you know, a great effect, especially in like the end game uh, simulated universe you can, you know, you choose the path and you can give a lot of different buffs. Right. So there's a lot to think about with these characters. There's kind of those two main things, their element and their path. Right. So um, if you don't have first off, if you don't have a preservation unit, even if you do have Jepard and like, yes, everyone has March 7th. Uh, and there's also the trailblazer the fire trailblazer is uh preservation as well and they you know he does really good at the job or he or she whichever one you're using does good at the job uh and, and march 7th can be used in certain scenarios just because she is ice and the, sometimes the freeze is nice and among other things as well but i think you will just hit a point where you want a really really good s tier preservation unit and right now the only two in the game i believe are eventrine and fujuan if you didn't pick up eventrine I would highly suggest considering at least Fu Zhuan. I've had her since her first release, and she is absolutely insane. Like, she's amazing. I I think she has higher value than a lot of the other five stars in the game. And I would say the same about Aventurine. If, let's say, you miss Fu Zhuan here, I would highly consider pulling Aventurine if he comes around next, before Fu Zhuan's next run, or if the game decides to introduce a new preservation unit if they're as good or on par with these characters it's just a good thing to have and even if you already have a venturine having both of them i mean you're gonna have two teams now that can have really cracked preservation units that just can really change the game especially in end game because then you still have your three slots that you can focus on a lot of damage and buffing or debuffing so if you don't have either a venturine or fujuan i would highly suggest just looking at fujuan now, the next question we have is what kinds of teams are you trying to build? Now, this is pretty easy for uh, Fujuan, but for Boot Hill, um, it's going to be a little bit different. So obviously, like I was talking about before, really quickly, just go through this break effect, a lot of harmony units, a lot of buffing, making sure that Boot Hill is your main damage dealer. You're most likely not going to use him on a DOT team because he's not built for that and you're better off just building a different character for bleed in that sense as well as in general that's just probably not what you're going to go after fujuan on the other hand the teams you're going to kind of build for are everything i mean no matter what like Ruth was talking about she's going to fit on any team that can really just if you get in the simulated universe blow through every piece of the content and then carry you out hopefully surviving most of the things because she's once again mitigating so much damage and much like how adventurine is doing she's one of the s tier units in the game the last question we have here is, do you need the light cones? Now, we already did kind of address this when we talked about the light cones and what they actually do. Honestly, with the kind of game that Star Wars is and it being a turn-based game, but also the fact that the weapon banners are separated really heavily answers this question already. In my personal opinion, you don't need the weapon if you don't have the character. If you have the character, then you can consider the light cone. That is how I see it because I don't know how you can accidentally pull the weapon. Like, there's no way I'm pulling Boot Hill's weapon personally because I'm personally not going after Boot Hill. So why do I need to get his weapon? And yeah, you can argue, well, you can use that on your other hunt characters. Maybe you don't have their five stars. But for me, it's like, well, okay, yeah, sure. My Topaz doesn't have her light cone. But why would I use Boot Hill's weapon? I would just rather wait for Topaz rerun and get her actual light cone. You see what I'm saying? So... That's just how I see it. If you don't have the character, don't pull the light cone. Just save your stellar jade. It's I think it's going to be well worth your time there. Now looking at E0 versus E1 and E2, the biggest thing to focus on when you're looking at Boot Hill and Fujuan, I think both these characters are going to be extremely good. This is probably one of the best banners that we've kind of had in Star Rail. And having both these characters at E0 is going to be extremely good and extremely fine. Honestly, you won't need to grab any constellations. None of them are like that. And thankfully, that's a good case for us. Now, first and foremost, looking at Boot Hill, his first constellation states that when the battle starts, he obtains one stack of pocket trick shot, and when Boot Hill deals damage, it ignores 16% of the enemy target's defense, which in my personal opinion is going to be a little bit better than his C2. 
here you're obviously getting another stack of pocket trick shot when the battle starts which is going to be better for you and then not only that but you're ignoring another 16 percent of the enemy target's defense which is already stacking on top of his light cone which it already ignores 20 percent of the target's defense so at e1 with his weapon e1 s1 you're already at 36 percent defense ignoring that defense the e2 for him states that when in standoff mode and gaining pocket trick shot it recovers one skill point or points and increases break effect by 30%, which lasts for two turns. It can also trigger this effect when gaining pocket trick shot stacks that exceed the maximum limit, but it cannot trigger repeatedly within one of his turns. Now in general, I do think the E2 is good, but I wouldn't really say that it is better than the E1. And the reason why is because you're getting a lot of damage stuff and it's a lot easier to obviously get that E1. And it doesn't feel like the E2 is really worth the two extra boot hills to actually get this second idol in. and then rift looking at fujuan what do you really think about looking at constellations for her well in my personal opinion having like i said in the video i've had her since her first run and i just have e0 and she oh she's so good just at e0 she does her job so well you don't need i'll say right now you don't need any eidolons if like just, if you want to save just save but if you are spending or you just really like fujuan you want to really maximize what she can do um, then yes, these Eidolons can still give you some cool buffs, especially to your other teammates. So looking at her first one, this just states that the knowledge effect increases crit damage by 30%. And remember when we were talking about Fujuan, when she, you, when you use her skill, you're granting that matrix of prescience to all units, which is how you're mitigating damage, right? That's her main idea of like how she actually sustains your team. Well, on top of that, now with the first Eidolon, you're giving all of those units in your team, all of them. 30% crit damage, which is very good. So across the board, and that also, that also doesn't uh, apply to Fujuan herself, which if you remember her burst is a okay kind of hit it, it, because it scales off of her HP, which is how you build her. So it can be nice, a little kind of touch of sub DPS, and it does help herself too. But the main focus obviously is all that crit damage to your other characters and your damage dealers. That's of course gonna be pretty good to get a little bit of extra damage on your damage ceiling on your team. Looking at her second Eidolon, this states that if any team member is struck by a killing blow while Matrix of Prescience is active, then all allies who are struck by a killing blow during this action will not be knocked down, and 70% of their max HP is immediately restored. This effect can trigger one time per battle. So basically, this second Eidolon on Fujuan just turns her into a better Bailu with the free revive. Because you're putting them, you're reviving them if they get struck with a killing blow, and restoring 70% of their HP, which is very, very good. And now, first off, from my experience with Fujuan, even at E0, I very, very rarely ever experience any one of my team members receiving a fatal blow, just because Fujuan is that good at sustaining. So if this even happens, you get the free revive. So like, it's really good because it could happen if you're like, once again, looking at the very, very top of the end game content, it is possible. You, there's some crazy stuff that you have to, you're, you know, put up against that deal crazy amounts of one hit type damage, which again, kind of backing uh, you up, Vixen, with like preservation versus abundance. That's why I, I'm on the same side. I think preservation is just inherently better because as a turn-based game, it just makes more sense. You can't like, at some point you have to receive a hit, right? So preservation is just more sustaining in my personal opinion. Now that's not to say abundance can't do the job like Woho, Wocha, and among others, they're very good units too. But I'd rather just go after Fujuan, right? For example, than any of those first. That's just my personal opinion. Now, as far as which Eidolon I think is better, because I think Fujuan is already so good with sustaining at E0, I don't think it's necessary to go to the E2 and that just, makes me believe personally that the e1 is better that's the one i'd rather have just to get more damage out of my characters because she's already doing her job so well of sustaining we hope that this video could help you decide on whether these characters or light cones coming up on the next banner are for you as always if you have any suggestions or questions that may help out other players or ask us go ahead and let us know in the comments make sure to like subscribe and check out our discord as well thank you again for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one